to extrude along an edge what we're going to use is going to be a combination of a component mode a face or a edge or an object such as a circle and we will also need a curve or a path for that extrusion to follow curves are found under create curve tools and these are the types of curves that we can use CV curve, EP, Bezier, pencil curve tool and we can use the three point circular arc and the two point circular arc the best way to draw a curve is on a orthographic view so I'm gonna use the side view this time and I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna select the EP curve and as you can see if I click and then click somewhere else and hold the shift key it will restrain my movement and in order to create an EP curve you need three points and on the third point I can either hold the shift key down or I can go manually you create the curve at the end when you hit enter so this is our curve right here I can right mouse button over the curve and go to either the curve point control vertex or the hole I tend to manage the curve by going to my control vertex and these are my control vertexes for the uh, curve I can move them with the move tool and then hold V and snap it to a point same thing here to get a straighter curve I can do the same thing here and here I can take this guys and snap it to this point right here if the snapping is not uniform we need to go to the move tool and under move snap settings deselect retain component spacing this way when I move them and I hold V you can see the V right here is for snap to points if I hold V and I snap it to this point right here now all the points are aligned to this so I can move this point down and get a sharper curve okay I can also move this guy right here and then move this guy down distribute this one in the middle and I can move this point further down the same thing for this point so now I have a curve that I can use to extrude something so what I'm gonna do I'm going to extrude a circle let me close the curve tools down and let me reset the move tool let me deselect retain component spacing another place to control that if you hold the W key for move and you click on your canvas you can select keep spacing or deselect it okay so here's my curve I'm gonna go to object mode I'm gonna create a circle by going to create NURBS primitives and I'm gonna go to circle so here's my circle geometry I'm going to move it and then immediately hold the C key over my curve and C stands for snap to curve and I'm gonna snap that circle to my curve okay I can drag it along the circle but I'm gonna move it all the way to the top and to extrude a circle onto a curve we're gonna go to curves and surfaces and then we're gonna go to our extrude icon and double click on my extrude button so I can get the options so what we want to do is we want to create a tube and I don't want my output geometry to be NURBS I want them to be polygons as soon as we select that 
you will notice that we get those extra options right here. So we don't want triangles, we want quads. And what we want is we want a tessellation method of general. And when we do that, we're going to get this initial tessellation control. So let me do this first. I'm going to select the circle first and then the curve. And I'm going to click on apply so I can get the extrusion. And as you can see, we get this very bizarre geometry right here. Okay. All this now can be controlled under the channel box. So the extrusion was the very first thing that we did. What we need to do next is go to our tessellation. Remember, this is the tessellation right here. As soon as we selected output geometry polygons, we created a tessellation setting. And the way that you fix this is that you go to U-type and V-type. The V-type and U-type have to do with the amount of edges, both in the latitude and the longitude, that we will add. So we're going to go for per span number of isoparms. And you will notice that now we're getting a good amount of edges in one direction. This would be the U. So if we switch this to per span number of isoparms in the V-type, now you can see that we're getting a really good amount of edges. We may want to increase it in the V. I'm going to double it to 6. Hit enter. And I'm going to reduce it on the U. I'm going to go to 1. Let me change the V down to 4. Perfect. And the reason why I pick something low like 1 and 4, it's because this is at level 1. Again, if we hit 2, we're going to get the smooth preview with the wireframe. And then if I hit 3, I'm going to get my smooth. As you can see, this smooth right here, it's very nice. All we need to do is check our normals. And I'm going to go to Mesh Display Reverse. And now my normals have reverse in their direction. And our tube looks really good. So one thing that you have to know is that this new geometry has what we call history. So if I go to my circle and I use the scale tool and I enlarge the circle, the whole geometry will be enlarged. So this is really good if we want to change the thickness of our curve on the fly. Make it a big tube or make it a thin tube. And also, if I go to my curve, you will notice that my new object turns pink. That means that the object is married to both curves and circle. If I go to the curve and I go to component mode, I can select my control vertex and I can move those things around and it will control the newly created tube. Okay, So again, because we have history, we can still modify our new extrusion. So once we're happy with what we have, we have to select our new created geometry and we have to go to edit, delete by type history. So now neither the curve nor the circle will be able to control our newly created extrusion.